Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. This is my full and complete CMU setup guide that's going to give you all of the best steps and settings allowing you to run all of your favourite games on this emulator at full speed on your PC. I'm also going to be showing you how to use the brand new native motion controls that were added in the very latest version of the emulator and on top of this I'm going to show you how you can optimise your PC to get even a better performance than you ever had before. As usual, everything you need for this guide can be found down in this video's description and if you need any additional help with anything I show, please feel free to head over to my Discord server and we can help you with any of your problems there. Before we start, remember to hit the like button down below if you appreciate these guides. Let's jump straight across to my desktop right now and get this setup guide started. Okay, first things first, I'm going to show you how you can update an older version of the emulator to its latest release. However, due to changes in this 118.0 version, I would absolutely recommend doing a fresh install. There are a lot of changes in this emulator that are going to make your life a hell of a lot easier. So to update an older version, all you need to do is open your CMU folder, run your CMU.exe, and if it doesn't auto-update, you want to come to help click check for updates and CMU is going to automatically find its latest update and install it for you. As I said, I absolutely recommend doing a fresh install. I'm now going to show you how you can do just that. First, you need to download CMU from the description of this video, then we're going to extract it to a folder of its own. Once extracted, I'm going to delete this zip file since we no longer require it and I'm going to bring this to the center of my window. Next, let's open our folder. These are all the CMU files that come with the EXE. What you want to do is right click your cmu.exe, select properties, come to compatibility and you want to select run this as administrator, disable full screen optimizations, then select change high DPI settings. You absolutely need to have both of these tick boxes selected scaling by application. Once done, click OK, click apply and you are now done with cmu compatibility settings. Once that's done, we can launch cmu for the first time. This is going to launch the quick start getting started guide. This is going to allow us to set a custom MLC path our game paths, download our graphics packs and set up any additional settings. First, you need to create a new folder into which you're going to be storing your games, updates and DLCs. You should create this CMU emulator backup folder somewhere where you have a lot of available storage. Then into this emulator backup folder make this MLC01 folder as shown. Once created, let's jump back to our quick start guide. Then we're going to be selecting this MLC folder as our brand new custom MLC path. Now if you followed a guide of mine in the past, you should already have this MLC01 folder, so please select the correct one or your game updates, DLCs and game saves will not be detected. Next, we're going to set up our game path. To do this, again, all you do is click browse, then navigate to wherever on your computer you have stored your Wii U games. Here are all of mine, your Wii U games should be shown up in a code content and meta format like so. Please make sure to only select the folder containing your games and not the individual games themselves. Once you have your game path selected, let's download our community graphics packs. We're going to need these graphics packs later on in the guide to boost the visual fidelity and performance of many of our games. Once you're finished here, click the next button and this is going to bring us to our input and additional options section. You can see here there are some tool tips on some button prompts you can press in the emulator to perform specific actions. You can also map your input from here, however since it's a little bit unstable at least for me, I'm going to show you how to configure input in just a few moments in a different screen. Please also enable automatically check for updates and also make sure that this don't show again box is ticked right here, otherwise this getting started screen is going to pop up every time you launch the emulator. Click close, we're now finished with getting started. If you've used this emulator in the past and have successfully re-added your MLC folder which contains your game updates and DLCs, they should be showing in the games list now. If not, I'm going to show you how to update your games in just a few moments. For now, I'm going to show you how to map and correctly set up your controllers. This is going to include how to natively use motion controls within the emulator. For emulated controller, you want to select Wii U Gamepad. For controller API, depending on which controller you're using, you're going to select from here. If you're using something like an Xbox One or 360 controller, you're going to select X input. However, if you're using a Switch Pro controller or a DualShock 4 controller, be it with DS4 Windows or a better joy for CMU, you're going to select DSU client. When using the Ryo-chan version of a DS4 Windows, which you'll find in the description, coming to settings, you should find this UDP server. Make sure that this tick box is activated beside UDP server. Then when you come back to CMU beside controller API, click settings. 
Into this IP and port box, you want to enter the exact same information that you find there. You 100% need to make sure that these are matching. Once they are matching, click close. Then after this, you want to click this drop down window. Your controller should show up as a client one. Once selected, you now need to set up your controller inputs. Once you have everything mapped, you need to come to the profile section at the top and input a controller profile name. I'm just going to name this DSU1. After you've entered a name, click the save button and you're now done with mapping your controller. Setting up input for Switch Joy-Cons or the Switch Pro controller is the exact same. All you need to do is download Better Joy for CMU, you'll find it in the description. Then once your controllers, be them Pro Controller or Joy-Con, are connected, you need to make sure that you enter the correct UDP server. As with DS4 Windows, you'll find this information in the drop-down in the section below your controllers in Better Joy for CMU. You can see it right here. All you need to do is make sure that the information is correct. Then again, from your drop-down window, select your client and map your inputs as you would have done previously. As I said previous, if you're using something like an Xbox 360 or Xbox One controller, you're not going to be using a DSU client, instead you're going to be using X input. Make sure to select X input, then again from your drop down window, click controller, then map your inputs and make sure to input a profile name and click save. Under X input, you also have some of these additional options for Rumble that unfortunately right now are not available for the DSU client controllers. Hopefully this will be added at a later point. Make sure again to add a profile name for your Xbox controller, just call it Pad1 or something similar. Click save and you are now done with controller input configuration. Next up, we're going to go over our general emulation settings, come to options, general settings, in our quick start guide, we covered most of this already. Just make sure to copy my exact settings here. Next, let's move on to our graphics section, one of the most important areas on the emulator. Basically, if you're using an NVIDIA GPU, you want to use exactly what I'm using right now. If you're using an AMD GPU, however, I would highly advise switching to the Vulkan Experimental Renderer. This is going to give you a by far the best performance on an AMD GPU. Also, if you're building a shader cache, be it on Intel, Nvidia or an AMD GPU, Vulkan is also the fastest way to do so. However, for the best performance on an Nvidia GPU, you are going to get much, much better performance if you use OpenGL. Also, if you're an NVIDIA GPU user, you can get much, much greater performance by disabling this option right here, though I would highly advise only disabling it once you get into gameplay. Moving on to audio settings, you basically just want to copy exactly what I'm doing, set API to X audio, set your TV channels to surround, make sure to enable gamepad audio and turn up the volume. Once you've done this, this is all you need to set for audio. Moving across to our accounts section, it is in this area that you can make separate user accounts on the emulator. Please be aware that each of these user accounts is going to use a completely different save directory. For example, if you and your girlfriend or you and your little brother and sister or whatever want to use separate accounts and separate saves, you will need to assign and make them a brand new account. These can be selected from the options menu, which I'll show you in just a moment. On top of this, if you want to remove an account which is no longer in use, simply select the account you want to remove, click delete, then click yes if you want to remove it. Make sure you don't accidentally delete any accounts that you do wish to keep on your system. In respect to settings in this general settings section, we're basically now done. You can pretty much ignore this debug section since as a user, you're pretty much never going to use it. Once you have all of your settings correctly applied, you can now click the X in the top right hand corner. We're now done with settings. As I said, you can easily swap this active account right here. Please make sure you're using the correct one to load your own individual saves. For console region, you should leave this at auto. Console language can be changed to your own preference. Once you have all of these settings and changes applied, we can move on to our next step where we're going to be updating our games to their latest version, adding their very latest DLC. This is a hugely important step of this guide since games like The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild are just not going to work on the emulator if you do not update them. So as you can see, in this version and DLC section, my game version of Breath of the Wild is updated to its latest version, version 208. If you wish to update any game on this emulator, you want to come to File, Install Game Update or DLC, then navigate to on your computer wherever your game updates are stored. Mine are stored right here in my Wii U Updates folder. You can see here that this is my Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild update version 208. To update your game, you want to come to this folder, come to your meta folder, 
select your meta.xml for your game's update, this is going to begin the process of installing. Since I already have mine installed, I do not need to reinstall it, I'm going to select no. Again, if you wish to add your game's DLC, you follow the exact same steps. Again, come back to File, Install Game Update or DLC. Again, you want to come to the area where your DLC is stored, mine is here. Come to the meta folder, again select the meta or meta.xml file since I already have my DLC installed. As before, I do not need to install it again. Once you have these installed, we can move on to our next section, which is going to be going over some of our games list options. If you right click your game, you're going to see these options to start emulation. You can also favorite your games, edit your game's name, access the game directory, save directory, update directory and DLCs which you've just installed. On top of this, you can also edit graphics packs, game profiles and refresh your games list. What you can do is you can right click and favorite some of your very favorite games. I'm just going to favorite some of these. When you add a game as a favorite, it is going to be added to the very top of your games list for ease of access like so. Next, what we're going to be doing for The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is right clicking, coming to edit game profile. It is in this area that you're going to be able to select how many of your own CPU's cores are going to be used for this game's emulation. It is very, very important for the best performance to set your CPU mode to a recompiler that matches the amount of cores that your own physical CPU has. You also want to set threaded quantum to 100,000 cycles. This can also greatly help with your performance. In the latest CMU versions, you don't need to change anything in this graphics section. All that you need to do in this game profile is make sure you're using the correct CPU mode and threaded quantum. Once you're happy your settings are correctly applied, click the X in the top right hand corner of the window to close. Thanks to recent updates to CMU Emulator, many, many more games are now compatible with these multi-core recompilers. For example, games like Super Smash Bros are now compatible with dual and triple core recompilers. So as usual, make sure to change these to a setting that best suits your own system. Also making sure to set threaded quantum to 100,000 cycles for all of your games. Next up, we're going to go over how to apply graphics packs to greatly boost your performance and visuals in game. The easiest way by far to adjust these graphics packs is again to just right click whichever game you wish to edit. Let's use again The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild since this is the most advanced game on this emulator. Select Edit Graphics Packs. This is going to open up this window. Now if it doesn't open up like so, all you want to do is click the download latest community graphics packs button again. For some reason there's just a weird bug where it just won't show up the first time you enter here. Doing this should make all of these display like so. Next what you want to do is you want to open up all of these fields. We're going to go over enhancements, graphics, mods and workarounds. Starting things off with enhancements, I'm going to advise you to use this clarity graphics pack. This can make your game look really, really nice and it doesn't affect your performance. It has many presets, but I like to use the Surfrost default. Moving on to graphics, you're going to activate resolution and shadow resolution. I'm not going to advise you to use anti-aliasing because it's really buggy and can give you a graphical bugs. When you highlight resolution from this drop down window, we're going to be selecting 1920 by 1080. You can use a higher resolution, but please note that using higher resolutions is going to give you a lower performance. Again, for shadow resolution, you can also set this higher, but as with using a higher resolution, using higher values is also going to give you worse performance. Moving on to our mods section, there is only one mod you absolutely need to activate. Click this plus beside FPS plus plus, and please make sure to activate all of these graphics packs right here. If you don't use this FPS plus plus graphics pack and also update your game, you're going to have terrible performance in Breath of the Wild. Under set FPS limit, you can also change your frame rate from 60 to whatever value you want yourself. Please note that there are certain parts of Breath of the Wild that require you to set your frame rate limit to 30 frames per second. Please also note that the higher the frame rate limit you set, the more broken your in-game physics are going to be, so I would highly advise just leaving this at a frame rate limit of 60. If you want to change it to 165 to test what kind of performance you can get out of your system, feel free to do so. But if you're just going to be playing the game, I would highly advise just leaving it at 60. Now that we're done with this mods section, let's move on to our workaround section where we can look at our GPU workarounds. Now in this section, you can see that they are listed as GPU specific workarounds for OpenGL. Then we also have some GPU specific workarounds for Vulkan. Please, please only activate the specific graphics pack workarounds for your own GPU, be it AMD, Intel or Nvidia. 
For example, since I myself use Nvidia with OpenGL, I need to activate these two graphics packs right here. Then since I'm also going to be using OpenGL, I also need to activate these two graphics packs at the bottom right here, LWZX and this Kakariko Torch Shadows Workaround. It should be fairly self-explanatory, but all you need to do is activate the graphics packs that are for your own specific GPU and that also match the renderer you chose previously in the graphics section. Since I'm using Nvidia with OpenGL, these are the packs I need to activate. As I said, it's very important that you don't activate the wrong ones for your own specific GPU. If you do, you're just going to have lots and lots of rendering bugs in your game. Once you've correctly applied your graphics packs, we can close this window and continue. Once you're happy that you have applied these graphics pack changes to whichever game you want to play, I'm now going to show you how you can further optimize your computer outside of the emulator itself to get even greater performance. So if you have an NVIDIA GPU, what you want to do is right click on your desktop, then select NVIDIA Control Panel. Once it opens, you want to come to Adjust Image Settings with Preview, make sure that you're using the Use Advanced 3D Image Settings, then click Take Me There. Now we're not going to be applying any global settings since these do not work for the emulator. You need to come to Program Settings, then click the Add button. Once the next window pops up, you want to select Wii U Emulator. This is going to select and use the latest version of CMU we've just been setting up. Then you want to scroll down to the bottom of this list. Basically, what you want to do is change these five settings. You want to set VSync to off, triple buffering and threaded optimization to on, power management mode needs to be set to prefer maximum performance, then you finally need to set your OpenGL rendering GPU to your actual NVIDIA GPU. All of these settings combined are going to give you a huge performance boost when you're using OpenGL with CMU Emulator. Please take note that these settings only apply to OpenGL, they do not apply to Vulkan. Once you have them all set, click apply and you can now close this window. Next, I'm going to show you how you can apply a virtual memory or a page file to greatly boost your performance and stability in the event that you only have 8GB of RAM. What you want to do is come to Control Panel, System and Security, System, Advanced System Settings, then we are looking for this Advanced Performance section. Click Settings, then click into this Advanced section. It is this virtual memory area that we are looking for. What you want to do is you want to click this change button right here, then you want to select your fastest SSD or drive, set a custom size, then make both of these 10,000. Next click the set button, click OK, then click apply. Please be aware that this is going to use 10 gigabytes of storage on whatever drive you assign it to. Applying this is going to greatly improve your stability on this emulator. Next, you want to right click your Windows icon, come to Power Options, then we're looking for this additional power settings area. You absolutely need to make sure that this is set to high performance in order to guarantee that you are getting the best possible performance out of your CPU. This high performance power plan can greatly boost your performance, especially so if you are a laptop user. As long as you've followed all of the steps and settings I've shown thus far, you are guaranteed to now have the best possible performance that you can get on your system. Please be aware that if you've never played a game on this emulator before, the very first time you boot it, you're going to experience what we call shader caching stutter. Basically, all that you need to do is stay playing your game and eventually it will become buttery smooth. All you need to do is build your complete shader cache and once you have it built, your games are going to play absolutely flawlessly. On top of this, if you need any additional help or do not understand anything I've explained in this guide, please leave a comment down below and I'll reply as quickly as I possibly can, or if you need more immediate help or support, you can head over to my Discord server, a link to which you will find down in this video's description. For now, that's going to be it for this full setup guide for CMU 118.0. Once again guys, thank you all very much for checking it out. Remember to like the video if you liked it dislike it if you didn't and as always subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.